Hello everyone, I am Jae-yong and um, I'm going to present about the live migration that my team have developed. And uh, before I start, I would like to first thank to Ian Campbell that who helped a lot of a lot of developing this migration and he basically he gave very constructive comments and migration turns out working very well. Thank you. <coughs> and um Okay, uh, and the title suggests that title suggests that it is performance evaluation of the live migration. So I think some 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 people yesterday asked asked me that what what is your optimization point for live migration and stuff. And um, actually, I just engaged to develop this live migration in short time, and I didn't do anything. I didn't do much thing about the optimization at the moment. So it is basically. Um, Working just working version of the live migration, and so the this talk is about live migration 101. And it starts with the motivation. I th uh, I think you guys already see this chart a lot, so I I'll just go briefly. That basically the number of data uh, data centers eat up magnifi magnificent of energies, and the number of data centers are growing, and um, that and basically the e electricity that in order to run and operate the data center increases is very sharply and this chart shows the to total cost of ownership here and it's, it is almost one over third of the cost is electricity and that basically makes the financial manager not happy and um, what we can do here is we can we can use an, uh, low power uh, processors for instance arm, arm ARM cores, and there are many uh, hardwares for servers, as the Stefano uh, talked about it um, tomorrow, uh, this morning, and also softwares and virtualizations, etc. And uh, we, along with this trend, I, our team decided to develop live migration. So this slide basically shows the required required modules for enabling live migration. Uh, basically, live migration is moving the running guest, running guest OS to from a physical host to another. That means we have to copy the the states of the virtual machine to to the target destination host, and um, that that basically includes the memory contents and. Um, VCP registers and some device registers and etc. And one most important thing of the live migration is that while moving the guest, we have to not disturb the guest as possible as we can. That we that for that we perform we also do the dirty page tracing. I think this slide uh, um, briefly explains what is the dirty page tracing and etc. Basically, this is the overall sequence of the live migration. Um, whenever Zentrus, Tech, Excel, or the report or the management software, OpenStack, whatever, requests that I want to move a running VM to another host, then it starts, it starts the migration process from the source host side, and it, in, and it uh, triggers the receive process at the destination site so so the destination can be ready for receiving a VM. And um, it first sends out the memory map from the source host, the memory map of the guest, so the destination can prepare some memory and uh, and based on that uh, source host sends out the memory from the start the entire memory of the domain. And um, domain U is uh, we have to note that domain U is still keep running. That means domain U performs writes while sending the memory, and those writes should be delivered to the to the destination host in order to keep the destination side memory contents up to date. That we for that we use dirty page tracing. Basically, we 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 trace all the writes from the domain in the in the, in the when when the uh, source host sends the memory contents, and that this. This dirty page tracing is keep iteratively uh, run, uh, iteratively performed until um, until some stop condition is satisfied. After that, at some moment we have to suspend the guest running guest to us. We cannot 
we can uh, mi live migrate our, our virtual machine without suspending the guest OS in case of this post copy. And after suspending, domain, domain new does not perform any kind of write, so we copy the last 30 pages and um, vCPU registers and device registers and etc. And those kind, those information is basically a sufficient information for resuming the guest OS at the destination site. And then resume the guest OS and kills the VM in the host, source host side. And um, I would like to talk a, de uh, a bit detail of the dirty page tracing, which is not a trivial task to achieve. Um, basically, it, it consists of two parts. The first one is how, how do we detect, the, detect that domain U is writing some contents? And the second one is how do we, how do we tell the tool stack, basically tool, basically tool stack uh, delivers the, reads the domain U memory contents and send it to the, to the tool stack at the destination site. So we somehow tell the tool stack that which pages are dirty. And the first, the detection, um, this slide basically shows the page tables inside Zen ARM. There are three page tables. The, uh, on the right top is the ta page tables for the guest, and the right bottom is the P2M table maintained by Zen. And um, the left, left bottom is the Zen page table for running Zen binary itself. And what it does is the following. Whenever the dirty pages process is started, we set all the, all the pages in the P2M table to read only. So whenever domain you tries to write something, uh, write, write permission fault happens and it is trapped by Zen and we can basically, basically record the, the page, page frame number. So we can know that it is, which page is dirty. And then um, we have to set this page to read write in order to, in order to uh, keep the domain you continue executing. That means at, the, at this uh, trapped moment, we have the guest physical address which should be, should be mapped to the guest machine address. And we have to change the corresponding guest physical address, the corresponding PT, leave PT entry, to the read-write read pages. And there are two choices. The first one is, you can just manually walk in the page table. It's very simple. And the second one is virtual linear page table. Manual walking is just uh, find the index find the proper index of the guest physical address. Oh, that IPA is actually the guest physical address. It is the term from the ARM manual and I accidentally misused it. And find the index and um, oh, these P2M tables are not um, mapped to the, to the Zen page table all the time, so we have to map it and read it again and map it and read it, read it again. And, um, Come to think of the guest writes something and then we have to detect it. This dirty page tracing happens really frequently and this kind of map and unmap and read is very inefficient. So what we can think of, actually this is Ian's idea. <laughs> that, <laughs> that we can prepare a virtual linear page table. Um, it, the reason that we have to walk the page table is that uh, the, uh, the page table is basically hierarchical. The third table, third, the, real, the real machine address exists in the third level page table and we have to walk by them. But if we <laughs> somehow map those, page, those leaf page table entries to the, to the virtual memory, virtual space with uh, the linearly, linearly ordering, for instance, the first one, it could be positioned whatever in the physical memory space, but it could be mapped in the virtual, uh, virtual address space in the first slot, second one in, to the second slot, and, and, and so on. Then by just uh, calculating, some, uh, calculating from the guest physical address, we can immediately find the, the leaf page table entry of the corresponding uh, corresponding page, and then just change the read-only bit to the 
read write. And uh, this is how this is the current implemented version of the of the dirty page detection. And as I mentioned earlier, this page table, uh, uh, this dirty page, happens very frequently compared to the to the uh, tool stacks tool stack asking which pages are dirtied. And um, for that, we have to temporarily store the dirty uh, the, the dirtied pages before the tool stack asks. So whenever tool stack asks, we can we can read the temporary the dirty pages from the temporary storage and and mark the bit from mark the bit in the bitmap from the tool stack. And uh, for this purpose, we there there could be several choices for this temporary storage. And uh, currently, we use linked list. That means basically, whenever a uh, dirty page is detected, we store the address to some kind of a uh, linked list. The reason that I have choose this method is that at the time of this uh, domain, uh, this tool stack ask which pages are dirty. We tell the tool stack, and we have to reset the the pay, all the page all the dirty pages to read only again. So whenever the guest writes again to the memory, then we we have to redetect that. And for that for that purpose, we have to reset all the page tables of the P2M P2M entries. And if we if we use some kind of a bin map or the, some embedded bits in the page table, we have to perform the full search full search of the entire memory entire memory frames of the domain guest and i i want to avoid that so we so i decided to use linked list and um, and it turns out that there are very uh, optimized methods for finding zero and ones in the bitmap and it is already implemented in zen and uh, i got some comments that we can i can use it and rather not using linked list because linked list requires some kind of a memory location while in the dirty page detection process and it, it is not that efficient as I think. But current evaluation have performed in the linked list version. And um, this is how I, uh, how my team developed the live migration and uh, uh, basically about the performance evaluation, not we, just not just evaluate the live migration, but also want to see the energy efficiency between x86 server and um, ARM server. Actually, I want to say ARM server, but the actual evaluation performed in the ARM boards. So what we have done? Uh, we set up uh, a x86, x86 server and we prepared the ARM board and we both installed Zen and we try to run a uh, streaming server in the domain guest and measures how many stream concurrent streaming clients can those streaming servers can support. In the meanwhile, we also use the power meter to, to measure how many watts are consumed for supporting those kind of numbers. And um, as you know, the hardware is not is not fair. It is absolutely not fair because one is a server and one is a mobile featured board. But uh, beside hardware, we try to be fair, as fair as possible in terms of the scheduling or the driver mode. Driver mode. <coughs> we both use PV and um, other things. So, what is the number in case of the Arndale board? The maximum streaming clients that one Arndale board can support in based on Zen virtualized platform is 110. And if, we, if I try to increase the number of VMs, they, uh, for instance, I run two VMs, I, I both run the streaming server at both sides and try to, try to uh, the clients are trying to connect and getting streaming, the numbers are decreasing. That is because we, Arndale board have only two cores and one for DOM0 and one for DOM U is the best configuration at the moment. And what of, and the uh, and the consumed watt is 14. So the client per watt, basically, 
uh, one, one watt, per one watt, how many clients can be served is seven. As you see the row, uh, bottom row there. And um, x86 server can support 11. Basically, higher is better. It was the, this result was quite disappointed, and my manager not happy about it. <laughs> and um, we tried to we tried to figure out. And currently, the core is really bottleneck. And if we increase the number of cores, of course, in server case, we are going to increase the number of cores. And it would, it, we think that it would be much better. So um, somehow we, tr we acquire a quad core on board, and it has some, how do I say, some features for the fast, fast network and etc. And the result is much better. As you see, the, for, for, for quad core on board, the best number comes when we use three VMs, and the maximum streaming client is 300, and the required watt is 18.9 watt, and the clients per watt is 15. And um, finally, my manager was happy. <laughs> but, and uh, and I, would, I, I would like to still want to say that this is not the optimum, optimal values in both sides. Also x86, x86 side and both ARM side. There are many, 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 many good things for increasing this performance and whatever we know, we tried it both side. Whatever we don't know, we didn't try of course because we don't know. And um, it gives this value. And <laughs> we are thinking that, I am, please keep in mind that this is a streaming workload, which is IO bound workload. And for certain, ki for certain types of IO bound workload, we believe that ARM servers could give quite nice performance. Okay, back to the live migration. Um, one of the key usage, use, ca use case of the live migration is server consolidation for energy efficiency, and of course, it works very nice. And if, if we can consolidate many servers, then energy saving ratio is increasing, of course. It's, it, this is quite um, obvious results. I just and uh, for, for implementing the dirty page detection, I mentioned about two methods. The first one is page table working, and the second one is the virtual linear page table. And it, but virtual linear page table gives very nice performance. The lower is better. This is the elapsed time for handling one dirty page on the left and the elapsed time for, for telling the tool stack how many pa which pages are dirty on the right, and both shows very nice performance. And uh, service downtime. As I say, suspend and resume is requested in, during the live migration, and in between, that is, that is typically known as time, downtime, and it is around one second, and I'm not happy about this result, and I, I would like to further uh, profile which functions take which, how, how many times, and want to optimize it. Also, the total time of live migration is also one important metric. While I was trying to migrate a streaming server, when the streaming clients are around 10 to 20 streaming clients uh, attached to the server, uh, the streaming clients, the, the, perf the, the qu quality of the streaming decreases when I migrate because of this dirty page tracing and very many things that happen in the server. That means we have to somehow decrease this, these values. And if you see the IPERF case has the highest value, it is, it is over, it is over eight, 80 seconds. And um, the reason is that it, it eats up all the network bandwidth that, and live migration also requires some network bandwidth and it basically conflicts. and. I remember uh, one guy in the KVM forum told about the RDMA-based live migration, and I think it's, it is quite cool feature, and we can, we can maybe apply that one here to, in order to resolve this kind of problem. And um, this slide shows the, the dirty pages while during the, 
during the dirty page iteration, and we can see that it is immediately converted to the minimum values. And um, the, uh, the stop conditions, actually I didn't mention about the stop condition before, and I, I tried to read the stop condition from the x86 code, and I tried to apply it, the same one here, and it shows these results. And I think ARM server is not that powerful at the moment. And that means DOMU guests, the right speed of the DOMU guest is not that fast. And that means the 30 page, 30 page generation rate is not that high. And that, that means that it gives very fast convergence. And we may need some additional stop condition. You know, because we can immediately stop the VM whenever it is converted and just send it because that makes basically the total time of live migration, live migration smaller. Okay, that's, that's my talk of, of this live migration. Do you have any questions? For the uh, migration part, do you have the, uh, you have data for ARM, um, do you have the comparison with x86? Uh, no, not, not at the moment, but I, I also would like to see the comparison to the x86, especially this convergence thing. I want to see how, what is the convergence characteristic in the x86. Okay. My question is actually about the linear page table. Uh -huh. So is it you mentioned in the linear page table is programming one of the page table entries to point to the page itself? I mean, the linear page table is achieved by that? Uh, I mean, at, let's say for the x86, you uh -huh. have the faulty memory as a page, as a page table, right? Uh -huh. I think that you have there are many entries Basically, you ah oh, yes, right, right. Grasp one entry and point it to itself. Right, right. Is that, that made made by this? Yeah, we of course um, the total size of the page table is for the third entry is very large, and that that makes uh, via virtual linear page table requires a very large amount of the virtual memory. Mm -hmm. So 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 actually, my question for this uh, linear page table is. Uh, uh, if you want to use this linear page table, this sort of page table must to mount to the Zen itself. Yeah, then yeah, you can use the, the use the virtual right. address to right. access that. So, right, right. so you will every time when you try to read, mount these tables to to Zen's page table, or maybe Zen is sharing some virtual, for example, virtual address space with the with the guest kernel. I don't know. Oh, okay, I got it. So I was actually trying to understand because in the x86 you are using HVM. For example, you using a shadow page table, you cannot place a linear page table in shadow page table because otherwise the guest can access a certain portion of a linear address to really access the shadow page table itself. It breaks security. So actually, I was trying to understand. I don't know so much about x86, but um. Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, maybe with this uh, I can try to get an uh, ARM spec. Thank you. Uh, yes, in both x86 and ARM, you put the, pa the linear page table into Zen's page tables rather than into the page tables the guest is running because it's Zen that needs to access them. Any more questions? Uh, okay, we're running a little bit ahead, so uh, the next talk will start in about five minutes. Thank you.